Yeah. yeah. Mineski, these are two heroes that they've had a tremendous amount of success with. They're nine and one with Rio and the Tusk in this patch. Uh, both Jay, who's tagged up as Raging Potato, uh, and Cuckoo have played the Queen of Pain with some success as well. You know, th they're giving themselves a chance in the early phase. The Undyne is a little scared for the carry, though. So at this point, I think OG target bans um, heroes that will deal well against the Undyne. I think a Gyro ban is definitely in line here. And maybe one more that counters Undyne from a support role. Something high magic damage, maybe like A. Because uh, Undyne Shadowfiend is also very good for pumping up Shadowfiend when in, in their high ground pushes with heals. So it'd be a like there was even some moments of weakness in the last game where Shadowfiend Miracle was playing a little too aggressive and it looked like he might just waste his Aegis. If they throw an A Ice Blast on top of that, they could definitely burst him down very easy. I think the, the Wyvern is the other hero that I look at banning here as OG just because it's such a comfort hero for Mineski. Reserve time. And they're going to think about this. I mean, the rest of the draft has been very fast. So this is just like a, a normal thing, I think. And it's their second ban as well, so... The second round phase is really the place where you get to form your strategy and do weird things if wanted. Do they want to ban a Huskar here? You know, things like that, maybe a brood, something they have to Okay, and the instant waiver pick from OG now. Yeah, I think I think that was one of the I think the discussion there was do we want to ban the winter wyvern and and take another hero or do we want to essentially get two bans in one with the winter wyvern block pick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me support wise it was either disruptor or wyvern. I think they both respond really well to the tusk and actually have good enough lockdown versus the queen of pain. <laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised here to see Mineski picking up the Disruptor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got double wow. heals on dying as well. Are we going to see a Husker? Because you didn't, you didn't waste the ban on the AA, but you pick it up here. I mean, both teams could pick it, really. OG did play it the other day. Oh, that's true. That's and they're true. against uh, Fnatic even. That was the best of one. They're like, yeah, we'll pick a hero. We'll pick this uh, Husker <laughs> guy. Um, it's not very good on aggressive tri lanes, though. Um, almost every Huskar game that is picked by any team, the opposite team reacts by aggressively tri him because his base damage is so low, he doesn't really get strong until level 3, level 4. Yeah, if, he, if Huskar doesn't have a strong laning phase, he utterly falls apart. He's so dependent on that snowball that he usually starts about 15 minutes in. Wow. OG, I mean, pretty standard that they like to run uh, dual lanes when the Undying, it's usually going to be one of those other melee heroes, Night Stalker, uh, Tusk, even sometimes you'll see like Spirit Breaker, but Night Stalker being left in the pool, still a really good counter to the Queen of Pain, can easily clean up heroes like Ancient Apparition with ease. Yeah, and I really like this, leaves the options open, they've run Night Stalker on three different players, Moon's played it, No Tail's played it, uh, Fly has played it, so I feel like this gives you a lot of tactical options, Undying can still be a core or a support here. I do like Menesky's draft right now though, I think it's in a good place, they're gonna need some harder lockdown. Night and day versus game one to me. Is that a, is that a meme joke? Talking about Night Stalker? <laughs> um, I, I would go for... I, I think they just need range disables and then they're, they're fine. They just need an initiator that's a little bit more instant than Tusk. And I, I kind of like Mineski's lineup. Because they're just going to go for burst kills. They've got the core for it with Queen of Pain. They have AA, which is the support for it. And then they just need something that's a little easier to lock down. Slardar would obviously be perfect, but it's banned. Um, there, but there's other options that they can go for. Yeah, I was just a, I was a little little bit concerned about that. Their their go to offlaners. I think you have to run Tusk here as a core for Mineski because their other go to, their other go to offlaners are out for the most part. Yeah, uh, I think most um, the most likely pickup would be uh, a support like uh, Rubik is usually good with Ancient Apparition. It uh, provides a decent like instant disable against some of these heroes. Sets up. Uh, the Queen of Pain and Tusk for their initiation. The problem is is that um, I can't think, like at 6.84 they probably ran it, but I don't think they've been running Rubik at all recently. No, they have not. I don't like it versus Undyne either, it's a little scary. Um, maybe even something like Avenge wouldn't be terrible. Oh, so are, are, you, are you completely away from the Disruptor, Cap? I don't like it. Uh, Stalker, I don't like yeah. it. Yeah, the Night Stalker. The problem is that both Undying and Night Stalker are so in your face, and Disruptor isn't very good at responding to aggression. He, he works much better in conjunction with aggressive heroes, and it doesn't help them set up a burst. I mean, I guess they could glimpse into a kinetic field and then do their combo, but 
I really feel they need something to slow Night Stalker and Undyne from running at them. Wow. That's one way to do it. Wow. Okay. That just completely caught me off guard. I mean, they have played at this patch. They're five and four with your rear on that hero. I like it a lot. You still have the kind of gap closer of the Night Stalker. Yeah, that's, that's probably why they were taking so much time. But I think everything else is okay for the Drone Ranger. But doesn't every, everything that you just said about Disruptor struggling against in-your-face heroes, doesn't that apply doubly to the Drow Ranger? That's what Gust is for, man. <laughs> Thank you, Icefrog. <laughs> Gust, as well as um, they do have, like, Queen of Pain and Tusk to kind of get uh, someone in the face of OG to draw attention. The Night Stalker is going to be focusing on silencing the Queen of Pain. You have the Tusk hopefully being able to draw attention onto the SF. Um, it's going to be the Night Stalker the and the cold embrace from the winter wyvern they're going to be serious issues for the drone ranger because you have that single target you know entirely physical damage focused mechanism for drone ranger and then the night stalker gets in the drone ranger's face stopping both uh giving that miss percentage chance as well as taking by the agility it, i i think maneski were really struggling looking at like what kind of carries they could have gone for they couldn't really go an am this game because there's too much lockdown from og if they too go too hard of a carry they're going to get run over they knew they needed to have to get something that started off early and gave them damage early and this also makes sure that queen of pain has even more favorable matchup okay guys what i want to see here it's crazy it probably wouldn't work i want to see the fifth pick husker anyway i want to see husker <laughs> with, I want to see husker with the drow aura uh, it, is, it is disgusting if you do it right this could be an off lane queen of pain they don't have any supports that back them up, though. Snowball is not adequate enough to cover a Husker. I, 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 I agree. I, I, on paper, I think it's bad, but it would be so much fun. The Wind Ranger ban? Yeah. Uh, they they have run support oh, Wind Ranger I don't know before, about that. but. Yeah. Um, It'd be good with Throw or. It'd yeah, be, have more damage than it normally has, which is it's lacking lately. So this is part of the problem with the versatility on the Maneski lineup. Uh, I don't think they have that. De uh, big of a depth when it comes to a hero pool, and sure. they they don't play Visage. Come on, Can just they? just yell the Husker. Why not? It sucks again. It's horrible <laughs> against PL. It's horrible against so many heroes. But I just want to see it. The, the Drow Visage is the optimum pick here. Sure. Well, vi Visage is. I mean, eight and two so far in the major. But yeah, you've got to have a here. Visage player. It's definitely good against Undying Wyvern. Their trial lane would definitely be better. Venge. Okay. okay, so Venge is in. It's a safe pick. And we're locked and ready for game two. Kamineski, hang in there. Let's find out with your commentary team as we head into game two. Indeed. Thank you very much, Paul. And we're ready to get ourselves in for game two versus Mineski and OG Dota. And the draft sin. Well, we're seeing the Drow Venge coming out by Mineski. They're playing that card, but OG is going to be the no-tail phantom lancer. Yeah, I actually thought Mineski would go for the PL instead of the Drow when they went for the Drow here. Um, it's a great hero against Undying, just destroys the Tombstone very easily. Um, it is very good at swarming heroes like Night, like Night Stalker. Yes, you can get countered by the Silence, but you need to hit it first, which actually gets really difficult, and you can purge it with Diffusal. Uh, and it's a good hero for Mineski, so I was really surprised to see them go for the Drow. But they do have a strong lineup this time. I don't foresee an outcome similar to game number one. Okay. They might lose, but they're not going to get as stomped as bad. before. I, I really I really doubt it. All right, well, here we go. Here we have it. Let's see if Maneski can pull it off here with this lineup as we get ourselves ready for game two. OG Maneski. And uh, also, I mean, we talked about it briefly, me and you, after game one. You said where it all kind of went wrong for Maneski is the way that they didn't really adapt to the lanes that OG yeah. gave to them. In terms of the lanes this game, are there certain matches that Maneski are going to look for and they're going to move around if they don't get them? Well, I think the the main difference here is that Mineski, with this AA Venge support duo, uh, is it even a support duo? No. Or am I? Let me think. Do they ever swap roles on their players? Or do they always stick to the same roles? On the side of Mineski? Yeah. They, they sometimes uh, put Raging Potato in the safe and uh, put uh, Cuckoo towards the mid. Okay, so they still they keep the other roles the same. Oh, wait a second. They're actually already going to find No-Tail here. Okay, giving it some here. Right, yet to skill anything, and there we go. Puts out the shards. No-Tail, he has got the doppelganger, though. And it will be. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Actually, unfortunate there with the jump, but it, it didn't matter nonetheless. Mineski had already given up on him. Forcing him to skill doppelganger level 1 is already nice for Mineski. It also secures the rune. He'll have it on cooldown when the rune spawns, so he can't even try to steal. I doubt he would have tried for that. Uh, to answer your question about which lanes they should have...
We'll see if uh, Raging Potato even goes for that. That's an interesting thing whenever you watch Drow. I think this is one of the heroes that pro players build uh, with most diversity. Sometimes you see four points in Frost Arrow, sometimes you see zero, sometimes you see the Frost Arrow is leveled up before Aura, sometimes vice versa. Um, I think the last draw we saw in the tournament was uh, Virtus Pro against Vici Gaming, and he didn't even skill Frost Arrows Illid in that game. Maxed out the stats for okay. pushing power and survivability. And Raging Potato so far hasn't put a second skill point. He's actually waiting to see if there is an, an opening in the lane. Alright. He's been finding levels Those are some right pretty now. good undying stats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 24. This reminds me of the old That's Fanatic IO stats. At one point, they had like points. some 85% win rate with IO across 30 games or something ridiculous. I got uh, good hero. Brother. Jesse Vash on this uh, bench did come in from the side here with the haste room. Maybe seeing if you could find anything. But uh, of course, it's always going to be really hard when you've got this wife and just sitting behind Miracle. They're going to go in. And they're not going to commit or try and throw anything out, because every time the Wyvern's around, it's just going to be so hard to catch out the Shadow Fiend. It's, it's not a kill that I think Mineski should even be trying for. Uh, the unfortunate thing is Cuckoo probably is aware that he's losing the lane. I'm actually very surprised that it's going this one-sided uh, for Miracle. Uh, so they did rotate the Vengeance a little bit here, but rather focus on the other lane. Shadow Fiend is going to get farm anyway. Uh, I would mainly say if Mineski wants to rotate with their supports, either look to put some pressure on the PL in this bottom lane, or go and try to prevent OG from getting free stacks for the Shadow Fiend, and that's how you counter him out instead. I could have to be very careful at the race. Really He's needs bringing him so low. He is incredibly close to the money for it. He just he doesn't want to walk for it. Oh, the race. Nearly coming through there from Miracle. He was going to survive it, but... <laughs> Still, this I mean, this is not yeah. good for Cuckoo at all. It should not be this. It, he even has Drow Aura. This can't go this well for the for the Shadow Fiend this early on. So Miracle doing a great oh! job. Oh, yeah, this this is the time you want to be careful. <laughs> and he does get away. Bottom, Bottom lane, Ryan's yeah. in trouble. No tower with the body blocks. Look at him go. Stop him, Ryan, from being able to get away from the tombstone. Fly getting the slaps in there. Jalal's forward, and they should be able to get this one. First blood there. Some very nice play there from the duo of No Tell and Flight. And Mineski, they need to have supports on their supports. Uh, did I did I just say supports on their supports? They need to have town portals <laughs> on their supports at this point in the game. Uh, you're four minutes in, you're playing an offlane solo Tusk. It's obvious that OG at some point will try to put on the aggression. I think a TP from Venge there easily saves him, or even the AA could have tried. But OG, they see an opening, they go for it and get rewarded. Actually seeing, uh, obviously on the side of Mineski, they're going to look for an opening themselves. Smoked up from the top lane, Jesse, Vash, and Jules coming in with the wraparound towards the mid. Let's see if they can find anything with this rotation. As you can see, Miracle's come up fairly far, but Crit is, will, will be there with a corn Embrace if necessary, and there we go. Straight onto Miracle, trying to buy him time. They've got Chilling Touch on them, still doing a fair bit, and Miracle's going to go down. They'll get the kill onto the SF, and they force back Crit as well, so a successful rotation there from Mineski. Nicely done. Yeah, Chilling Touch is so good in this early stage of the game. Even being able to do damage through the Cold Embrace is yeah. great. It's got him low enough that they could just kill him off with a scream afterwards. But this oh. opens up in the top lane. Top lane. Very yeah. surprising to me that Raging Potato actually just stays this aggressively. It's so easy yeah. for Mumia. This is such here a big city. kill. Out looking to fog him, but the right click's there to cancel it. Bite his way through the trees. Moon gets the slow off, and the final slap will do it. And at the same time... Down on the bottom lane, Fly and no Tail are able to find themselves another kill. Mid lane, Cuckoo jumping forward, he has got a Sonic Wave. Will he be able to bring him low enough to use it? He's going to pop it anyway, he gets it! He Whoa. gets a double kill! Cuckoo! A beautiful, beautiful combination of spells used. And literally must have just been enough to bring them down. That was an incredibly close Sonic Wave. That must have been an overkill yeah. of like 10 health on exactly. both of those it's, heroes. Yeah. That was very, very nice for Cuckoo. And they're going to need him to come up big in this game. He had a, a pretty weak start in the lane, and now they've recovered him very nicely. Three kills, minute six, and Queen always makes for a, a very dominating game. This hero can snowball out of control. And with the Drow just dying solo to Night Stalker, this offlane NS that was having a very hard game is already level five now for OG, so a very big play from Moon Meander, realizing he had that opening. Ah, this is really nice as well. Maneski continued to smoke up, looking for something bottom. They'd love to find No-Tail, and No-Tail just walks into the magic missiles, the face snowball to follow up. Have they got the control? He's looking for the doppelganger at the high ground. He'll get it. The shards won't trap him. So No-Tail will be fine and is able to avoid that gank there from Maneski. 
I'm wondering if they could have killed him if they didn't snowball. They had a warden there. Oh, wait a second. Okay, right. And a little bit of trouble, Moon. He's going to chase this one down with a slap. Just a little bit the of trouble. As well. Jesse Vash is there with a tear about with the decay. There is a snowball buying some time for Ryo, but he'll still go down there. Fly gets the kill. They're trying to look for more potential, but Cuckoo is there to back up the side. Screen comes out onto two. Look at them diving, though. They found themselves a second kill. OG, they're looking for jewels as well. Cuckoo will take down Miracle, and he might be able to clean up. Scream, double kill for Cuckoo. And now he's going to look for Fly as well. Balling up on the Queen of Pain. Flies on his own. Cuckoo blinks forward. Looks to block up the Undying. There's the triple kill as he goes. Absolutely. Cuckoo doodle do. Three kills there for the Queen of Pain. And he is really keeping Maneski in this game. He has all their kills. Crit. Oh this my. Oh, are you serious? I think he might get it. He's got him. He just needs one more attack. My right. goodness. Seven minutes into the game. Ultra kill for Cuckoo. Raging Potato will get a weight up, but this quick... I mean, he was in every single place that he needed to be at every single time. Someone made a joke after the last game that uh, was Arteezy standing in for Cuckoo on the Ember. I think C2I is standing in for him on the Quads. <laughs> Some good stuff here from oh, uh, from Cuckoo. Seven kills, seven That's minutes. Insane. Look at his net worth. He is 2,000 gold ahead of the Shadow Fiend after being 20 CS down. He has 25 CS. Another look at the notes. Oh my He's god. To... Oh, Cuckoo! Have some mercy! Eight kills before the eight minute mark. Oh, this is. Yeah, give the man a rune. Let's see what he's up to next. Okay. It's Let's the see what he, gets. he is upset after last game. Right? He, he's got something to prove. <laughs> there must have been some talk in that team room. I mean, he's got he's got a DD now as well. And this is going to be a very fast orchid on the man. Top lane, Moon's trying to go in onto Jules. It uh, looks like hey, he's not going to get any help from his friends here. As he will go down, Moon. I'll be able to reset the aggro here of this tower. He's fine. And gets himself a kill up top. So even though the Cuckoo Show is going on, OG are still managing to keep themselves uh, kind of on, on level in terms of kills. Yeah, I think Moon Meander has played a very good game on this Night Stalker. His first death was understandable. It's a very difficult lane to play. And the few openings he's been given, he's taken full advantage of. So really looking for him to keep OG in this game, as Miracle is not in the kind of situation we usually see him in on the Shadowfiend. Three deaths, minute eight. Uh, they do not even have any stacks for him. I think he's already farmed them, so this mech that we're used to seeing from him sub-10 minutes in good games is very, very far away right now. This is... This is really... I mean, it's a 700 gold lead. You would think, wow, there's a Queen of Pain with 8 kills. They're oh, owning? Oh, well, he is owning. Make that 9 potentially here. He's going to oh. actually TP out. He's out of mana. Cuckoo, okay. Not great for the man there. Gives his streak away to fly on the Undying. Top lane, Moon might be in trouble, and he will be. Raging Potato comes through, so Mineski do find themselves a kill up top. But, uh, yes, unfortunately there for Cuckoo giving away a streak. This time he bit over a little more than he could chew. He's going to be happy that the gold streak went to Undying and not yes. to the Shadow Fiend, because then he would have been very much back into the game. Uh, but still, it's one of the marks of the some of the best players in the world, is that even when they're falling out of control, they still don't drop the ball. And this time he just got a little bit too excited with his lead. It's, you know, you're, you're high on adrenaline, you're absolutely on a roll and you just want to keep it going and he got a little bit too greedy there and gave OG a finger and they took the hand. Oh, mid lane as well. Jules just trying to find levels of course does have level six now. Ice Blast is ready. Bottom lane. Ryo tried to contest the rune. He did get it but No Tail trying to chase this down. There'll be an Ice Blast coming through but No Tail's already backed up. Tuss did eat the mango ready to look for a turnaround stun if No Tail came after him but No Tail playing the safer game here. And it's the way to go for OG yeah. right now, is playing safe. They need to buy time for Phantom Lancer. They need Shadow Fiend to get probably a mechanism in this game. Uh, even though they're playing against an AA, I still think it's the right choice. It's obviously Ice Blast does counter all the healing, but either you can outlast it and then get a mech off, or you just, you know, don't get hit by it. <laughs> Sounds easy, but... It's still, it's the, it's the way OG can come back and win this game, is just playing it slow. They do have good counter picks for Drow. Both Night Stalker and Phantom Lancer can get up in her grill and keep her out of the fights. A lot of attention being drawn towards mid lane and for OG. You've got four heroes here. I'd love to set something up. Crit, what levels he's sitting on at the moment? Yeah, halfway through five. So looking to get that Winter's Curse so they can maybe have some form of initiating onto this quad, allowing Moon to get in there with the Crippling Fear. Top lane, Potato actually smoked up here. 
Maybe looking to see if anyone comes into the lane or looking to just jump out and, and start to get the push on. No tail's going to come up towards the top. This is such an aggressive position from Raging Potato, being all the way up here. They do have, of course, this ward, but with Darkness cast, he doesn't feel safe at all in that top lane, and he will TP out wisely. In the middle lane, pressure looking to be applied from OG. They want to see if they can find another one on Cuckoo here. But there are heroes ready to back him up with the smoke. It actually expires. And men are in a good position to flank. And there's just swap actually going to be Cuckoo initiated there with the Sonic Wave, gets it off. There's just Noble as well to follow through. Ice Blast is flying in, and here we go. It's going to connect beautifully onto two, onto Crit and Miracle. Cuckoo, look at the burst to bring that Miracle in, he'll get it. They take down the SF, but Cuckoo, oh, he's going to survive. He gets himself out with the bottle. Can they get the kill here? No turn with the final lots. He'll find it. Takes down Cuckoo. So they do find two, but they did lose Miracle on the Shadow Fiend. The question is, can they find anything more? Shards get thrown out. Isn't going to hold back Moon as he continues to pursue this Tusk. Gets the urn on the uh, Tusk and the Void Slow as well. There'll be a Snowball. There's a TP coming through from AA. Can they try and turn this? They get the Warriors Punch low and with the Shards. Coffee's going to kick it, but Moon, he turns and he will be able to get the kill. They do manage to bring down the Night Stalker. So ending up a two for two trade there between the sides. I actually think, wasn't that a three for two in total? I think someone more died before it. Uh, I'm pretty sure OG came out on top of that and they got the tower. So a great win for them. The, sw the swap play from Mineski there was obviously... It was a good way of trying to get a, a fast kill, but OG quick on the reaction with both the Cold Embrace and with the Soul Rip before the Ice Blast landed. So they got all their heals off, and yes, Miracle ends up dying in the end, but it costs them a lot more time and resources. As a result, OG do get the, the better fight out of it. And Cuckoo has been slowed down. That's the important thing, because this could have gone completely out of control. Like, it already was reaching that point, but they've managed to kill him twice now, while he's only been getting one kill in return. This could have been an 11 minute Orchid if he kept the uh, kept the game going his way. Now it's about to be, uh, what's this, 16? Maybe? That's still good timing, but... I mean, the interesting set the fact that Cuckoo just holds the record for most kills this patch at 10 minutes in. And this is him in second place now with this game. First, uh, first place was when he performed on the Huskar, but... This man, he knows how to do it. In terms of net worth, he is still 2k oh, ahead. A good ice blast, and yeah. okay, Flies. straight on to Fly. And then Fly gets himself out of this one, and he will tick down here. Throws out the tombstone. Maybe they see if they can find something in return. They get the crippling fear onto Cuckoo. Avoid Jules. Jules goes for the straight TP out. And he doesn't want to stick around here. Cuckoo will hang around here in the tree line. He himself, he does have a TP. He's going to stick around, clear out the wave. Feel fairly confident to do so. Moon's going to wrap around, potentially seeing if he can close in again, but Cuckoo's straight there with the reaction. TP's out from the side and, and keeps himself safe. Yeah, Moon got spotted by the creep wave, and he didn't have darkness cast, so of course the 800 night yeah. vision is enough for Mineski to be able to react there. On their Queen Born of Pain. If this Ice Blast lands on no telling it will, he could be in trouble. We'll get the doppelganger out. Crit is about. Okay, they're not going to chase this one. And there we go. So Orchid is now complete here on the Quap and Mineski. They're going for Roche. Are OG going to get wind of this? They've got an SF in the neighborhood. He has got this Invis rune. Is he going to head into the pit? Oh, this could be big just as it's about to expire. He's got the red cream on too. Oh, oh my god! Miracle! That could be the turnaround they need. A Cuckoo's going to come in and desperately try to turn, but oh no! Three Cuckoo from Mineski! And the Roshan will go down to the Radiant. Aegis is going to be picked up by OG, and that was absolutely disastrous for the Dyer. And they might lose right here as well. Moon's going into the Tusk. He's going to get it. It's a, oh, no, he's going, he turns, he messes around a bit. There's a snowball, but I think this Tusk is still dead, and he is. Effectively, a team wipe against Maneski. My god, Sin, that was the worst nightmare for them. Game winning rune and Miracle making the decision to try and check the pit there. Absolutely perfect play from him. And now all of a sudden OG. Oh, okay. <sighs> now they have a 7.5k gold lead. Oh my lord. Oh that my was... lord. <laughs> <laughs> that... If he doesn't, if he comes in oh. five seconds later, they have the road. He might Miracle. still get a couple of key kills, but... <laughs> That's a that's a good game read right there for Miracle, and now OG are just, just full of momentum. That play there. Wow. I mean, Mineski, they're going to be feeling a bit shaken, but they're still they can still fight. 
You know, this is by no means a similar position yet as to what they were in in the first game, but... Wait, it was his Shadow Blade? It wasn't Invis Rune? No, I'm pretty sure it was an Invis Rune, and then he brought the Shadow Blade. And then I'm he bought it after? I'm oh. almost 100% it was oh, an Invis Rune. Regardless, he was invisible. It was literally at the last <laughs> second of the Invis Rune when they came around. Oh dear. No, no oh, not no, this not too. Not Oh my, oh. everything. Oh dear, just oh. taking absolutely everything away from Mineski. They might as well just go top and take this tier 1 tower as well. I mean, why not? They've just got the biggest spike in gold over the last two minutes. One of the biggest we've seen all tournament. It's about a 10k swing right here. Oh, no tail. This could be the off. kill that they're He's looking gonna for. He's going to be fine. And Kuki's got to get himself out. Oh my god. I mean, we talked about how the co-op, I think it was about a few minutes ago, 2k ahead of the Miracle SF, and now he's ahead. And so is Notel. And they're smoking up. OG are now looking for the aggression. Let's see what they can find as they come towards the top. You've got towards the mid, Maneski, keeping themselves fairly close together. Miracle. They'll lead him with the Shadow Blade now. Oh, he's found Potato. Is he going to go for the straight up Requiem? Yes, he is. Potato getting fried by the side of OG. They also lose AA here, Maneski. The rest of them just teeping the hell out. And two more kills for OG. They're finding them perfectly each and every time now. And the issue right now for Maneski is that they haven't been able to utilize their draw at all. It's difficult to say how many kills she has netted Cuckoo. I think one or two of the kills would not have happened without the draw, or maybe even three, so that has been great. But he's not contributing to fights. He just gets caught out, can't really engage or anything, and Maneski are just losing every single bit of map control. It's It's got to be super devastating losing that Roshan like they did. And now they need to get it together again before it's too late. Just losing... It's interesting to see that it's kind of it's kind of like game one, just delayed. You know, they, this time they got through the early game, and now they're just getting run over again in the mid game. Um, they're gonna see if they can find Miracle here. Miracle's gonna try and juke it out. Hey, Jesse will get the swap. They've got the snowball. They've got the orchid down as well here. Miracle could be in trouble, but he does of course have that Aegis. It will pop in Maneski. They've got a Sonic Wave as well. They may not try here for round two. They'll get the silence up. A Miracle with the Shadow Blade. Looks like Maneski themselves just getting back. They've got a sentry down here, but already Miracle just revealing himself, looking to try and find Jesse Bash. Won't quite be able to do it. Yeah, he's got the backup of Flying no tail. And Cuckoo, oh, he's going to just head down and take himself this DD here. So, I mean, what, what is the plan for Maneski? How do, how do they kind of regain their hold on this game? I think getting rid of that Aegis is a pretty big deal. Now they rely on either landing a good Ice Blast to uh, engage a fight, on a key target, of course, this allowing the Cold Embrace and the Soul Rift from having an effect on the target is the way they kill heroes. They don't have that great burst anymore. Sonic Wave is starting to fall off a bit 20 minutes in when heroes get this amount of health. Um, split pushing is also a good way of dealing with it, but it's very difficult for the Drow. The Queen of Pain has more options, and she is doing it right now in the bottom lane. We'll be taking this tier 1, so it's something. Mistiming the Glyph here from OG, so that's also... shouldn't be underestimated. We'll allow maybe Cuckoo to have a look at mid lane within not too long. Yeah. And more important than anything, they need to activate the Drow. Yeah. And I don't think Sanjin Yashi is the way to go here, but... Worth noting as well, uh, at this point of the game, we've just had the Ags oh, and Gem is. on Night Stalker. Uh, I, so Ags, Gem, Night Stalker is going to be there. Something else for Mineski to worry about is OG's control of the map. Oh, and it's night time now yeah. as well. He's going to have five minutes of night, the four natural ones, and then the darkness. It's, it's going to be hard for Mineski to find the farm right now. Smoke is the... Really, the best way for them to to find some sort of opening, playing against darkness and Axe Scepter already 20 minutes in is almost impossible. No uh, tell. Oh, well, maybe Sandy Nash is actually the best Double choice. Gang is aggressive. The defusals down with the spirit lance low as well. The PS swap from Jesse saving the drown. Get the signs to push back the rest of the side of OG, but No Tail just moves in. He's looking for the kill. Actually, backs off. So won't finish off Jesse. Doppelgangers to avoid the magic missile. The illusions come through. There'll be the snowball. Defensive given alive, but it's not enough. They'll still lose the vengeful spirit here as they do pick that one up there with the decay from Undying. And pick off there for OG, and they've got the space that they've needed to just pile on the pressure on this top tier two now. Yeah, that tower is 100% gone. And Mineski are not really getting that much of a trade. They did get the entire bottom tier 2 with Cuckoo, which oh. is actually really good, but... Now the tricky part comes, like, what's next? 
that was the easy that was the easy grab for him. The mid lane is going to be very hard to push. Even getting out on the map in general is going to be difficult. They could. How many smokes do they have? None on the. None. Oh, they have one on the bench. So maybe with that good ward here from Crit, getting a lot of information. Mm -hmm. This is front of the ice buster slow down the push. Well, one thing worth noting as well is. Oh, is he George... going for that? Oh. Uh, oh. He's, he's going to try, but there is a tombstone now. Cuckoo's got to back himself off. Crit's moving in as well. He'll throw out a sonic wave, but there's your winter's curse into Requiem. Crit and the Miracle Man. Blowing up the co-op, and now Jesse Vash hiding in the trees. It's not going to work out. He's down as well. Raging Potatoes trying to move forward there. They'll throw out the shards. But OG again taking two and losing nothing. After they shut down Miracle very well in the start, he's just fully in comeback mode here. 180 CS minute 22. Way ahead of the Queen of Pain on Networth now, who overtook him by 2,000 very early in the game. And it's, it's just a shame for Mineski that they haven't really seemed to be able to activate the Tusk and the, the Drow very much. It's been kind of underwhelming from Ryo this game, who has had some standout performances, but this time around just isn't finding the openings that he needs with the Snowball, and still short of a Blink Dagger 20 minutes in. Unless if he wants to go for maybe the Greaves, he could actually buy a full mech right now. Oh well, almost. OG at the moment, taking control of the dire jungle, clearing up the camps and keeping the pressure in on this top lane. We'll see when they're ready to make their next jump in onto the side. And I believe, yeah, that is going to be so Manta style now complete here for No Tail on the PL. So if he already wasn't hard enough to kill, he's going to be even harder for the side of Mineski to deal with. And yeah, just a blink on the turf. So maybe that's something that they can use to try and initiate, try and catch out the PL, follow up with a, a silence. But the fact that he's got the Manta to remove it, it's it's going to be hard for Mineski. They need an Ice no Blast. Time. The heals are going to be too much. Even if they get a good opening on the PL, just a Soul Rip yeah. will heal him like 400. Especially if he has illusions in the neighborhood, it's very easy. Um, so they got to be... Mineski are just losing the entire map. There's not much to do when it's nighttime. You've lost all your tier twos and you're against an Ags Night Stalker. This is the probably the strongest part of the hero is this stage. They're gonna be waiting for daytime, which will kick in in 20 seconds. But of course, Moon will have the darkness, so they gotta wait another minute. And by that point, OG might have already taken Roshan. Mineski don't know, obviously. When it's respawning, it could be spawning any second now, and it is very clear that it's what Moon is scouting for. You gotta wait a bit longer. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if we, yeah, we just don't see OG go for any action until that. They're a very, very calm and controlled team. We very rarely see them go for the YOLO high ground pushes. They always play it safe and, and only go when they know for sure that they can have a really, really good shot at taking it. And, and that Aegis, of course, is gonna benefit them absolutely massively. And Mineski themselves, they, they just do not want to leave the base. They, they've seen what can happen to these heroes. On the plus side, though, the fact that yeah, AA, he is closing in on that Aghanim. So it's going to be something that's it's going to be really nice to hold OG back when they come in for these aggressions. That's true. We haven't talked so much about you, uh, Jules's progression. Mm. Uh, that's kind pretty of surprising. Good. He did get a fairly fast Midas, so... But still, even then, this is a pretty good timing for him, all things considered. And it's a big item, but I'm still looking toward this Drow. Can she find a way to position herself in the fight so she gets to deal damage? It's a lot easier on high ground, especially knowing you have Avenge on uh, on backup to swap you out. And that might be the play for Mineski once the high ground siege comes, is to try to bait the Drow. And have OG commit and swap her back, line an Ice Blast and a Sonic Wave, and take it from there. Mm -hmm. Roshan has spawned, Ice Blast. Gonna miss, but at least give them info here. Top lane, oh miracle, oh miracle, oh miracle, he's done it, he's done it again, the BKB even came out before she went down, oh miracle, and that is going to be as good as any to be the indication for OG to just go for Roche or even just push in the other lanes, down for 50 seconds there, that Quoppen, wow, miracle, I mean we talked earlier about his recovery, he's really done it this game. And popping that BKB was understandable because he was thinking, okay, Shadowfiend is going to attack Ray's attack, but he didn't even need to. He just attacked him, I think, twice. The attack speed on Miracle is very high with the Manta style as well as Shadowblade and Treads. Now even a full Scotty 2 Ice Blast will 
to scout them out, but they don't really find anything. Fly is just zoning. Just keeping them busy mid. <laughs> Making sure the Mineski don't get themselves anywhere near the pit. But this was very predictable that they were going to get the Roche, but maybe not this way, that they would find a pick on Quap first. Mineski? I don't think they can try to contest this. Do they have a smoke? Well, they do. It is a possibility that they try for it. They're going to be too late anyway. Yeah, surely it's not, not. Surely not. Roche. Now we have it. Roche and uh, Miracle picks himself up the Aegis. Uh, pretty much in tandem, but the A does have his ag Agadim, so... We'll see what Jules can achieve with that. The Voji's lineup as well. The fact that there's a blink on no tail, they're going to be very comfortably able to push in multiple lanes at the same time. So Mineski are going to have to try and deal with this as best they can. Uh, it's going to be hard. There's no doubt about that. Cuckoo can't blink. He just took a lot of damage. He has to go fountain now. And now OG are just clearing out the map again. They have the gem. They will probably wait for nighttime, kicking in about a minute. And that's when they can think about the high ground. It also makes it very tricky for Mineski to try to go for these bait plays because OG will get to see the entire area as they push in so they can just think one step ahead. Mineski might have to do something tricky like flank them with a smoke, which is being purchased here by A. They still have the one on Jesse Vash as well, so two of them are available. But look at their vision. They have one ward. <laughs> look at where that is. <laughs> it's at their bottom tier three. This is the vision that they can put right now. A miracle. Alright, so I'm not going to find anyone this time. Caught blinks away. Cuckoo. Now, after the BKB hasn't really found much more gold, and Miracle oh, uh, he's got an Invis Rune as well. Right, yeah, Miracle, yeah, Cuckoo's playing it safe. You just can't afford to come out of this base at this point, unless you're doing it in the form of a smoker as a five man. And it does look like the drow. I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but oh, hang on, hang on. Okay, okay, okay. That was well. without Requiem, and Cuckoo's out for fifty seconds. All right. Since his eight, I mean, he had eight zero zero, and now he's nine what? six one. Ow, what? <laughs> That's that. What was not play? No, it's it's just strange to see that miracle with this one play just completely shut down the entirety of Mineski. They, they just look. They look like they've lost their uh, their courage in this game. Oh, Potato It's going to use the Gust, but just look at this PL go to work. He has to respect this and go away, and he is going to go for the BKB. He could almost buy it if he sells his belt. But they're closing in on getting their first lane of barracks now, OG. And there is the BKB. Uh, you're going to have the quad back up. Uh, they've already lost the range racks in the middle, and the melee shorts to follow. Ice Blast is flying in. <laughs> Straight down the middle, Mineski now seeing to follow up, a miracle, oh, there's damage, Cuckoo just has to get himself straight back, a miracle now with the late game mask of man is to add to the pushing power, get that attack speed in, take down the racks, now we have it, middle set now gone, the shards, they will catch miracle, Jesse Vash moving forward, but the glimmer capes up onto miracle, he's gonna be alright, now just throwing in the, the illusions, big daddy blinks up to the top, swapping Cuckoo back in, saying you take these, that's a 40 second cooldown, and that's one of their most important spells that he just had to use to get away from PL illusions. If OG realized this, they could get the tower. I think. Okay, Here's here we your go. Smoke. Here's Try your two. smoke. But as you said, they don't have the swap for this. It's the Hail Mary, though. Something's got to oh, give. Oh, no. Moon. He's going to get silenced. Shards come out as well. But the Sora's there to heal. Ice Blast to fly across. And that's a nice Sonic wave. They'll get the Night Stalker. But No Tail's starting to go to work. Miracle as well with the Requiem. There's a snowball to buy them sometime. But they've lost the Drought. They've lost the AA. They're going to lose the Tusk. They're going to lose the Venge. Four dead. Only Cuckoo surviving. And GG is called. It's all too much for Maneski. OG just outclassing them this series two zeros in Radiant. yeah this was the good the strong og showing up today and mineski just not with their best performance and it's an elimination game as a best of three it's a lot about mentality the pressure that's on you if you show up on the given day if you're in your in your top form and unfortunately for mineski they did not they were not able to show what they've shown earlier in the tournament whereas og they keep it rolling stick to their guns very standard og picks in both games not